In the past, things were a bit different. For instance, if we wanted to make a phone call, we needed one of these. But these were no good out here, because they need one of these. And then technology moved forward, and we got these. Which were better, but still not very good, because... They were heavy, they were massive, the reception was <coughs> patchy, and although they would last for about two hours, that's only if you didn't talk on them. If you talked on them, they lasted about two minutes. But they were getting there. And then we had these. The first one that I remember that was really good was the Nokia 3210. Brilliant. It actually worked. It actually worked. It had a decent range, it had a decent talk time, it even had snake on it. But things continued to move forward and now we have these smartphones. They do exactly what they're supposed to do. These make our lives better and these haven't just replaced these, they've replaced these and these and these and these and although there was nothing wrong with these or these I absolutely loved them they made my life infinitely better but now they just seem a bit dated because of this I'm someone who likes new technology when it works and for the last few years I've had half an eye on electric motorbike technology because I could see that it was starting to get there but the range was still too short, the batteries didn't last long enough, they weighed a ton, they looked horrible, they just weren't right. Until now. This is the latest incarnation of the Energica Eva Rebelli. This is the first electric bike that I've ever seen that I really believe could be a real world bike. It's got a decent range, decent battery power, amazing performance. It looks fantastic and I think I could live with one. And what makes it the first usable bike, in my opinion, is that this is the only production electric motorbike that you can buy in the world that supports DC charging. You can charge this bike from 20 to 80% in half an hour. Half an hour. Plus, on top of that, it's got a real world range of around about between 110 and 120 miles of mixed riding. So that's spirited riding included in that. This isn't just 120 miles if you ride at 25 miles an hour in the town. This is 120 miles of out scratching in the twisties, going down motorways, riding in the town. This is genuine. Maximum power of 169 horsepower. 215 newton meters of torque. 215 newton meters of torque. And that's available 100% across the rev range. To put those performance specs into context, just for an example, my KTM Duke 790, which I love and is an awesome ride, has 87 newton meters of torque. 87. Okay, let's go up the higher end. So, BMW S1000RR, 113 newton meters of torque and a 0 to 60 claimed time of 3.1 seconds. That's quick. But the Eva Rebelli, 
2.8 seconds, or in the RS spec, 2.6 seconds, with 215 newton meters of torque. A Street Fighter V4S, 3.2 seconds, 0 to 60, 123 newton meters of torque. MV Augusto Brutale, 1000 RR, 116 newton meters of torque, 3.15 seconds, 0 to 60. I mean, the figures are bonkers. This is a genuine hyper naked motorcycle. It's just propelled differently. So, on paper, it works. But what's it like to ride? Well, I took a trip down to Not Your Average Bikes in Osset, near Leeds, which is your kind of go-to place for electric vehicles if you're in the north of England. And I took one out for a test ride. And here's what I found out. Okay, here we go. Stand up. Break in. Go. This is literally the first time that I have sat on this bike. So this is my first few seconds on an electric bike. Woohoo! Oh, I tell you what. Even just from this, I can feel that it's quick. Woohoo! Oh, it feels light. Very agile. <laughs> it's quick. And I like the fact that this one's got a screen on it because it's quite cold today. Effortless acceleration. And I haven't used the brake yet because the, the regen engine braking is brilliant. So when you come to a stop, it doesn't feel heavy and I can get, I can't get both feet flat, but I can get both feet on the ground nicely, balls on my feet, plus, which is unusual for me. Oh, it sounds like a rocket, like a spaceship. Do you know what, I feel like I'm riding the future. I actually feel like I'm riding something that is properly new and f sort of futuristic. Most importantly, I feel like I'm riding a motorbike. That's what I was wondering, you know, would it, would you still get the the motorcycle riding experience? And the answer to that is 100%. I am riding a motorbike now. It's not. I'm not riding something else. It is a motorbike that feels like a motorbike. It's just powered differently, and it just sounds different. But I like the sound. Slow speed maneuvering, effortless. Because you're not having to fettle the clutch or anything. There is no clutch. But there's no... There's just no possibility of jerkiness, you know, between the... With the gearing and whatever. It's just literally... Perfectly smooth. It's... it's so different. Oh, you bugger. I think I really like this. Oh, and look. On the front, on the tank. Well, what would be a tank? It's got a little Moto E badge. I mean, it's only a sticker, but it's still there. Because this bike's effectively been developed through the Moto E race series. So it is literally, this is the cutting edge of electric bike technology. This is as good as it gets at the moment, and it is really, really good. The throttle response is instant. If you twist it, instantly the bike goes. Yep. Some hardy soles. I would probably turn the regen down actually. If it was my bike. Just to the next level because it is very, very, very aggressive regen. It's um it is like putting a brake on. It's like a rocket. The motor on this bike. Oh my God. Oh, I love it. The motor on this bike is so powerful, so torquey, and so instant. Look at that. Oh. The, it's as if the bike doesn't weigh anything. It's like the bike is completely weightless and you are just being propelled forward at 
just effortless warp speed. It's very different. And I love it. Let's do it again. Oh my God. <laughs> Back wheel lost traction a bit there. I think the, the roads are quite greasy and I'm, I was giving it the beans. I'm guessing traction control must have sorted it out because I didn't have any problem at all, but I could feel that the wheel slipped slightly. You're just trying to accelerate so fast on a greasy road, there's, there's no way it can, let's see. And I love the sound when you're decelerating as well. It's, it's out of Star Wars, this. The, the sound effects are straight out of Star Wars. This is a comfortable bike as well. The seating position, the riding position, for me anyway, is very comfortable. Seat's comfortable. Pegs a nice height for me. It's a relatively sporty position. The, the pegs are slightly back, but not, not so much so that you, you know, limp right forward. It is an upright uh, riding position. It, it's very comfortable, but I could quite happily ride this all day. 215 newton meters of torque is a lot. And my God, it's addictive. This bike's got a limited top speed of 125 miles an hour. Jesus. <laughs> oh. And I would imagine, I'm, I'm not going to find out today, obviously, given the conditions, but I would imagine that it is like that right the way up to 125 miles an hour where it stops that it just pulls like a train without any dip from zero to 125 it's like a jet engine wow what a bike it's certainly not the case that this bike has no sound though it's not you know people were worried about electric being silent and you wouldn't hear it coming and what have you that is not the case. This bike has a sound to it. It's not as noisy as a, an internal combustion engine bike, but it definitely has a sound to it. It's got a noise. You would hear it coming and you can hear it whilst you're riding. If you put this bike on the scales, it is a heavy bike. It's, I think it's 260 kilograms. It is a heavy lump, but it feels very light. Even when you stop, because the weight's down low, as I put my foot down, I don't feel like I'm suddenly in control of a lot of weight. It's a lot of bike, but it is also a lot of money. At this stage with electric bikes, you're obviously paying for the, the development of the, the technology and the bikes. What draws me to this bike, as opposed to any other electric bike, is the fact that this is the only electric bike that supports DC charging at the moment. So you can rock up at a charging station, plug in your DC charger, and you can charge this bike from 20 to 80% charge in half an hour. Every minute you have it plugged in for, you're getting between five and seven miles worth of charge. That is real world usable in my opinion. So far, any of the worries that I would have had about owning an electric vehicle have been basically put to bed. I meant to go up there, yeah. Oh, I keep missing the uh, turns. Now, let's see what it's like for a U-turn. Let's do a foot-up U-turn on an electric bike. And I'll wait for these cars to go. Because usually I'd be using my clutch for this and fettling the clutch as I go around. Yeah, after this white one. There we go. Oh, simple. Completely controllable.
final thoughts? Well, I love the bike. I really love the bike. Could I see myself going 100% electric? No, no, not at this stage. Could I see myself owning one and living with one? Yeah, I could see that. I can definitely recommend having a test ride. They are awesome. Anyway, thanks for watching this video. I know there's a lot of resistance to electric bikes, so go easy on me. Thanks for watching this video. I shall see you in the next one. Bye.